This is the Fire Maple FMS 125 Pro Remote Gas Canister Stove, otherwise known as the Wildfire. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. I want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the Wildfire Remote Gas Canister Stove so that I could share it with you. So, you know, I've been using this now for about three months. We have the fire ban now on in Nova Scotia, and with the exception of just a few days where I could use my wood stoves, this is the stove I've been carrying. And so I have quite a bit of experience with it. In fact, I just used it today to cook my lunch, and I'm going to be making some coffee in a few minutes with it. So what I thought I would do is bring the camera down a little bit, show you some detail on the stove itself, but I'm going to be putting most of the specifications in the video description for your reference if you have some interest in this. I will have to take the stove home and light it up in the dark of my basement so that you can see the flame pattern, but then we'll close this video out with a few comments. All right, so I put the stove back in its storage case, and uh, I'm going to talk more to the storage case in a minute, but let's take it out and assemble it. All right, assembly is very easy. Fold out the three pot stand slash legs. They have really nice detents for locking them in position. And then of course you have your remote gas canister feed for your canister you would have away from this. A few of the key features, just start with those legs. They are made of stainless steel, so it does lend a bit of weight to this item, but look at the stability and the width. You can put some big pots on this and not have to worry about them not being able to support it by the stove itself or tipping over it. I think it's a great descript or great design that way. It is a very wind resistant design. You can see the burner inside and and the wind protector around the outside and it's quite close to the pot stands as well so again that helps a lot to, re to keep from losing a lot of heat from lateral winds just the same it's probably a good idea to have some way of blocking wind if it is very very windy last feature to show you is here is not common on all stoves these days but this one does have a piezoelectric lighter so overall great design i enjoy using this a lot now i do want to bring the canister or the storage case back in for a minute before I start giving you some specifications for the stove itself. So the storage case, this is one of those things that has a dual use and the idea of this storage case is that it acts as a cozy for your gas canister that would be the eight ounce canister. I'll talk more about uh, my thoughts on this in a minute but I just wanted to point it out that that is what the secondary use for this canister or this storage case is. Now let's bring the stove back in. I'm not going to spend a lot of time giving you specifications on this. I think weight is relative, uh, though, because you are, you know, packing with this. It's certainly not an ultralight thing, especially at 273 grams. It does have a bit of weight, but for that weight, you get a whole lot of strength and durability. But it also has considerable amount of power. Let me just get this, 3,240 watts. That's a quite a powerful little stove. But just the same, I find that I can get some very precise low flame for simmering and frying with. So it worked out very well for cooking. And actually, I really enjoy it. This is one of my favorite ones for cooking, if I'm not looking for ultralight, that is, of course. Now, I did do some boil tests with this, and uh, what I found is that the uh, best I could do with this and a pot was two cups of water, two minutes, 19 seconds. Not bad, right? That's pretty good in terms of speed but it did consume eight grams of fuel. So it is a little fuel hungry, but then again, it is quite powerful. That was running probably at three quarters wide open. In fact, I don't, wouldn't do that very often. I'd turn it down and just let it run a little lower. You're gonna save some fuel. It may take a few extra seconds to come to a boil, but you know, that's okay. You're saving fuel, which is the more important thing. Okay, so there's not a lot more to say about this. Let's just bring the canister back in, inside of the stuff sack. And I wanna talk about this combination for a moment. So. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure this is the best use for these. I did a little research into cozies on canisters and at best people think that they may, and I say may, help keep the canister warm in very, very cold weather. That's provided the canister started out warm. So if you had it inside of your jacket to keep it warm, you put it inside of this canister protector or something similar to this, that it may stay warm a little longer before it cools off and the pressure starts to drop. Okay, that's fine, I can get that. I'm not sure that it works all that well, but you know, some people believe in that. Well, here's the thing. This is not a winter stove. So I'm not sure that you would be using this as a cozy with this stove in the winter. And I say it's not a winter stove because it doesn't have a generator or preheat tube. Had this a generator or preheat tube, then this would be much more versatile for winter use, or at least very cold weather use anyway. And then you would, maybe it does make some sense to use the two of these things together. 
Just the same, it's not a deal breaker because you still need to have some way to carry the stove and a nice sturdy container like this storage case, it works just as well, regardless if you use it to put your gas canister in. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, let's turn the stove on. Turn the light off. That's full open. And that's pretty much as low as I can go. Open it back up a little bit. And put the kettle on. All right, a few closing thoughts for the Fire Maple FMS125 Pro, otherwise known as Wildfire Remote Gas Canister Stove. So yes, this actually has become the stove I've used most often this summer while the fire ban has been on. It's just a great stove for all the cooking that I've been doing out here. It's not ultra light, that's for sure. If I really wanted to go light and fast, this would not be the stove I would choose. But for all the other cooking, like more complex meals that I want to use larger pots on and have very fine control over the simmer. This is a great choice for doing that with. Now, I will ask if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comment section below. I'll put the links and all the specifications in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.